Okay, we come to the very last chapter of our, of our course, that is chapter 19. Okay, that is enjoying the rest of the journey. What is that journey? What is the rest of the journey? Journey of life. Yeah. I, sorry? Journey of old age. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, with, with what happens, what is the natural course that happens? Is that, you know, you get married, you have children, <laughs> your children leave the home, right? They get married, they have children, and finally you are, they'll die. Okay. But before that, there is a point of time that maybe as the original couple that we are following, only the couple is there, right? There is no one else in the home except the couple. And uh, it's again back to starting, where it's just the husband and the wife. The only thing is you're no more parenting. You're actually rediscovering each other and learning to love and be patient and uh, enjoy each other's company. So, what happened, Francis? <laughs> no more responsibilities to, to relax. Okay. So, you know, all that you do in your initial... 25, 30, 40, 50 years will begin to, you know, it, it actually helps when your children are away, when your children have left. And then you start to, you know, again, once again, uh, live life alone together. So there's no, no, no parenting, there's no, um, uh, no working, no income. There are so many other challenges that come in that stage of life. Okay, so it's it's good. It's time to enjoy that. Okay, but when we look through back, there could have been many challenges that would have happened, right? Challenges of health, challenges of relationships, finance, spiritual challenges. Many things can happen, but. Uh, at the point of time when you're at the last, especially when you're running a race, you'll have run 400, 800 meters race, the last lap, what do you do? It's really difficult, isn't it? It's the most exhausting one, the last one, you're so tired, you want to give up. And, and then you can't look back and say, Are you, I fell in the first lap, or someone pushed me in the second lap, or... You know, my shoe broke in the third. You don't say that. You have to let go of that to continue that race. And that's what um, we're looking at. How do we let go of the past challenges, let go of the regrets that have happened and continue to press on? Let's read uh, uh, Psalms chapter 84, verses 5 to 7. Let's read that. Blessed is a man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Okay. <clears throat> so through this journey, um, who becomes our strength? Who be becomes our fortress? It is God who continues to lead us through. You know, so even as we um, move in, and it says the valley of Baca. The valley of Baca is meant to be a place of weeping, meant to be a place of dryness, right? And it says to move away from that place to do what? To be able to rejoice. They make it a spring, means they are choosing to rejoice, they're choosing to find joy even with all, even after having passed through that valley of challenges or that difficulty, they're choosing to make it a spring. So how do you make a valley of weeping a place of spring? It is to keep rejoicing. It is to 
um, you know, sing out loud, say out loud, whatever has been good. So letting go of things that have been in the past, whether it's been mistakes, challenges, regrets, things that you have really failed in, to overcome that and come forward in that place of uh, rejoicing. Because it says, who is the one? God is the one who's faithful. He's the one who brings about every provision. So as we continue that journey, he's the one who moves us from strength to strength. Okay. Also, we are called, and this is a good time to think, to think back about the good times. Enjoy the good times. Now, as my children are growing up, you know, they're 18 and 14, I look at some of their pictures and really cherish it. You know, it's 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 something to look back and enjoy the way or remember, okay, what happened that day, what went on that day. It's, it's a lovely thing to do that, to just enjoy and cherish those memories. But not living, you know, I can't keep saying, I wish... I wish I could go back there. I wish I could go back there. I have to keep moving forward. Right? So um, scripture says that, uh, Psalm 77, verse 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember his wonders of old. Right. So for it's for us to be able to remember and think of what he has done, the goodness of what he's done, enjoy that, all the good things that God has given us. Um, and, you know, but not staying there not living in the past, but making the most of what is to come. So as, as when we reach there, to know that you know we may have only a little bit more to finish the race, right? to do it all with joy, to do it with, with whatever memories God's put into us with a heart of thanksgiving. Because from there, we're going to have something even more precious, isn't it? Right? It's not the end for us, but it's even more precious. So we end that journey wonderful. All right. Next is, what is our responsibility, you know, as an elderly? I know that none of us can actually relate to this right now. None of us, even I can't relate to it. But uh, but it's, it's good for us to keep this in mind. So what is important for us at that time is to be healthy, to be strong, to be stimulated, to keep that energy, to keep that vitality. Okay, so even if we are old, what does the psalmist say in... Psalm 103, verse 5. It says that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That, that even if you are older, that you will be satisfied and your youth will be renewed like the eagles. So God's, the word of God really promises even the, um, the fact that even as an old person, you can still bear fruit. You can do so many things for the kingdom. You can do so many things for God. No matter what issues or condition you may be in, you still can bear a lot of fruit in your old age and continue to be a blessing to those around, around you. Okay? So it is, it is important for us to walk through into that, into that blessing so that where we are useful and uh, um, efficient for the kingdom of God. Okay, um, our other responsibility continues to testify to those who come after us, to testify to the generations. Uh, so God has called each one of us, right? With a lot of experience we may have to be able to speak of God's goodness. And we read that in Psalm 71, verses 17 to 18. Can somebody just read, especially the 18th verse? One of you can read that. Yeah. You have taught me ever since I was young. And I still tell you your wonderful acts. Now that I am old and my hair is gray, do not abandon me, O Lord. Be with me while I proclaim your power and might to all generations to come. So we are called to proclaim his power and might to the generations to come. This is just not for your grandchildren, but also for those around you, every generation that is uh, that comes behind you. Okay? Um, now, what, what happens sometimes is, um, you know, the journey becomes lonely. There's only one person in that journey. Sometimes spouses die. One person in that, um, <clears throat> in that unit passes away. So you may need to run that race alone without your spouse. So uh, 
the the hope that we have is what we are going to have in uh, what what we are going to have in future and that's what it's written in 2 corinthians 14 a uh, 4 verses 16 and 18 uh, anand can you read that to corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 to 18 therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us far more exceeding and external weight of glory while we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal okay so even though it says uh, it says for our light affliction is for a moment right so what is those light afflictions when we age health maybe finance maybe loneliness right even though those afflictions are there there is something that's far more exceeding the eternal weight of glory so we may not uh, the things that we see we 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 have the perspective that it is temporary but things that are not seen is something that is eternal so we run that race even though our outside or our outer part may be fading may be broken may be bruised may be sick may be uh, completely uh, useless our inner man is to be strengthened by the spirit and we keep making that journey so that we can fight the good fight 2 timothy 478 i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith for what because there will be the crown of righteousness which the lord will give to me on that day and to all those who have loved his appearing right so we wait and we continue that journey till the time of his coming or of his calling okay all right okay so we're done with the entire course we have another 10 minutes but i just like to open it up for any questions any testimonies what you've learned through this last 15 weeks what's been useful for you the last 15 in every stage i think we went through every stage of life so what's been useful to you what's your take away from marriage and family now because my students are all here i can ask them i won't have silence here so there are all lessons like uh, on they ask them question like on person is not willing to like take the responsibility uh is it needed to marry or not so answer it is no uh, so from this chapter from this causes is like my uh, take away is like this the life is full of responsibilities so we should move through that uh, we should take that responsibility or else there is the life is kind of meaningless amen <laughs> Okay, so that which means Francis is ready for marriage. <laughs> okay, so one takeaway for Francis is that he's going to take responsibility if it's God's will. Oh, you know. Yeah. Oh, like oh, first of all, thank you ma'am for the subject. It's actually so helpful. And uh, for me actually uh, there are many things that I have learned, uh, especially how to maintain relationship not only from the point of uh, spouse and relate uh, marriage but with everyone like in the communications in marriage we have discussed the word if we have conflicts mm -hmm. how to handle those conflicts and uh, how we can keep our relationship good with the people that we love mm -hmm. by spending time uh, or uh, making some sacrifices which is a key takeaway for me mm -hmm. uh, how to have maintain good boundaries also and also how uh, to have the attitudes towards person who constantly hurt us but we love them but mm -hmm. how we have to deal with them 
and also discussing what are the things need to be discussed before entering the relationship or and main thing is like as a people who are in adulthood we are all always trying want to find a soulmate actually we are like so eager <laughs> but uh, we also wait and most of the time we want to like okay just get in and find out is it not or if it's not then we can break but it's very important like how it hurts the people's heart and how it spiritually entails also so it's better to start with the friendship and then seek the lord is the will of god or not it's all good advices and index yeah. so thank you so much thank you thanks friends <laughs> nice rin i actually enjoyed this course um i've learned a lot of new things even though i knew some things but i still learned more as well and uh, especially like happens to maintain relationships as well and um, and how we should uh, i don't know, i don't know, i learned a lot of things brother <laughs> no as if we are not only ready for marriage we are ready for grandparents also <laughs> it was just a comment of hers hmm. nikhil that's uh, it, it was helpful so like uh, as as you know in village areas like people used to get married in like 1920 21 but mm. before like they are not responsible to take care of that things they are not responsible to take care of their wife they are like what they going to do after marriage they mm. have any work or how they will like manage everything but they will get married but uh, uh, after reading <laughs> i also got uh, get to learn so many things about like we have to responsible if we are going to get married so because there is so many responsibilities if we are ready so then we should or else like how we will uh, uh will like our relationship how we will do this things all and how we will teach our children also so all responsibilities is very important to us thank you thanks nikhil <laughs> i feel like i never knew none of so many of these things we have a little bit of understanding but not into this depth it is so good now only god can help I me mean, whatever remaining the, i am sure that the lord will help and I mean do a wonderful thing i'll take all the good things <laughs> thank you anand um, so i want to thank you ma'am for the for taking the subject and you are the app lecturer for this and uh, yeah I, i have learned a lot ma'am uh one is one of the main thing is uh, uh the the chapter i remember attitude temperament and the relation how to maintain that relation with our partner and uh, <clears throat> this choosing a person before what we have to do as a as a person we are going into a relationship what we have to do yeah. what are the necessary necessary things we have to take care of and all the family um, i mean there are like how i all said there are some responsibilities it's not like uh, we we got the age i mean we we got this marriage is that doesn't mean we have to marry uh, <laughs> but there are so many things that we have to take care of and uh, have you have you told this uh, the relationship between god and our family uh, we have to keep god in between uh, and how to handle the situations uh, as a christians and how to how to be an example for others yeah there are a lot of things to tell uh, yeah. nice thank you thanks so much anybody on the call uh, shivakumar chira Ina, Jackin, Anthony. Chira wants to say something. I think someone's written something. Jackin has written. 
I'll just read what Jackin's written. Mm. The course was a blessing to me. It has strengthened my walk with the Lord to keep doing the right things and how to resolve conflicts better. Not to bottle it up, but in love, patience and long-suffering, yet he takes us through it all. Jesus gives each of us the grace and strength. How to teach my daughter, look out for opportunities to feed in the right perspective according to God's word. I thank God for the spiritual nourishment he's given me. Thank you, Jackin. Anybody else? Anyone else would like to share? Hello. <clears throat> Hello, ma'am. Yes, Chira, go ahead. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, you are. You are. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the course. And I am I really blessed and I learned so many things through this course. Mm -hmm. The main thing, like what Prince also said, like, you know, we young people are very eagerly searching our soulmates. But it's very important to wait for the right time to right place person to come in our life. So this is really helpful me to find the right person, like to whom God really wants that I should marry the person. I cannot hurry. I cannot search here and there. I, I have to wait for the right person for the right time. And uh, and mom, at the end, I have one more question. Like you know, in some relationship, what happened for some lies are there uh, for one to, to another person, and that for one lie they cannot trust them again in that very way. So if someone lies to me in a relationship, how can I will handle that? Okay. So if there is lies that happens, or there is the first uh, first time that somebody lies, you lose trust. And how do you trust them back again? And um, so that's a that's a great observation. Yes, lies, any kind of deceit, any kind of malice, breaks down trust significantly in a relationship. And if a person uh, and, you know, I think it's important that the person repents, comes to a place of true repentance. And once they've come to a place of true repentance, it is also for the other person, the other person in that relationship to extend forgiveness. Um, so I'd like to bring an example over here. Okay, So when you look at Jesus and his disciples, did Jesus know that Judas was going to betray him? Yes, Jesus knew. But was he entrusted with things? Yes, right? So uh, he, despite the fact that Jesus knew what were the events that were going to happen, he continued to teach Judas. He took place in the discipleship. He took place in the grooming. He was the treasurer, right? He used to, he was the one who handled that. So if you look at it, you know, uh, we offer grace to those who may have hurt us or offer grace to those who we feel we can't trust. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, on repeated errors like that, you know, you continue being a doormat. That's not what it means. But use the wisdom of God to confront at the right point of time, to clarify and to understand what that relationship is, is going forward. So use wisdom yet use grace and kindness as you deal with people. Okay. All right. Anthony's written, I learned a lot of things. I was blessed by the class. Key takeaway are resolving conflicts, making the choice, boundaries, and the big one is communication and marriage. Thank you, Anthony. All right. Okay. Um, the last thing that's remaining is your assessment, okay, your second assessment. I will post it by this evening uh, uh, for, the e for the online students. The e-learning students, it's already posted as of last uh, a couple of hours ago. So please go ahead and complete your assessment before the 24th of uh, November, okay? 
because if you don't complete that, you do not get the certificate to your course. So that's the only thing that is pending. For those of you e-learning students who have not completed the first assessment yet, please ensure that you do so both by the 24th of November, um, failing which you may not have access to your certificate, okay? But for the online students and the students here in person, it will be posted by tonight and you will have a week to complete it, all right? Okay, I think, uh, just read out what Nina also said. Uh, in all, a blessing, the course is a blessing, the impetus to go forward in our walk with God, the guidance and perspective to be uh, all that we need to be in areas where there is need for correction to live lives that bring glory to God. Enjoyed all the learning. Thank you. Thanks, Nina. All right. So let's uh, wrap up. So next week, we do not have class. Um, so today is the last class. So let's just close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your faithfulness over us over the last 15 weeks as we started this journey of learning about marriage and family. God, we've um, looked through this in depth, but we know, God, that it's only your spirit who can help us apply these truths, what the Word of God says about each life stage, each situation, each uh, challenge that we, may be go that we may go through. It's only the spirit that can guide us through it. And we look to you, God, that... Um, uh, look to you to help us make our relationships um, something that will bring you glory. Wherever we are, we may be young people who are waiting for marriage. We may be those who've just been married. We may be in our midlife with with older children. Um, or we may be those who've, who are walking the last lap. Lord, we, in all of this, help us to find joy in knowing that you have instituted good things in marriage and family. Father God, for those who are hurting, Lord, thinking about their own families or the families to come, Father, I pray that your grace and your love, Lord, will cover all of it, Father, and that they would have hope even as they press on forward. Thank you, Lord, I pray for each student Who's, um, who joined in the class, either in person, online, or e-learning, I pray for your hand of favor and blessing over each one of them. May their family lives, Lord, be, uh, be, um, uh, be taken care of by you. May it be a blessing for them, Father. And may your favor and your grace and your mercy be over each of the members of their home. Thank you because we are blood covered. Our families are blood covered. Our extended families are blood covered by you. Thank you. To you be all glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. God bless. Thank you all so much. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.